Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. We will talk today about um, inertial systems, about Galilean transformations, and how Galilean transformations are invariant uh, relative to certain laws of physics. Now, um, let me first remind you that previous lectures were related to um, certain concept which we called inertial reference frames, inertial systems. And uh, what's very important is we, we basically took as an axiom the fact that physical laws are supposed to be the same in all inertial systems. Now, let me just remind you that an inertial system is the one where an object which does not experience any kind of a force just completely free object, it's supposed to move along the straight line with uniform speed. So, there are many different inertial systems, and if you found one, then there are infinite number of other systems, because any system which moves along a straight line with a constant speed relative to the first inertial system would be inertial, obviously. And uh, we have actually introduced the way how uh, coordinates in one inertial system can be transformed into coordinates of another inertial system. This is called Galilean transformation. And let me just remind that, let's say you have one inertial system, uh, x, y, and z and you have another inertial system lowercase x, y, and z <coughs> if the origin um, of this inertial system let's call it beta and this is alpha if origin of beta reference frame is moving along a straight line with a constant speed relative to this inertial system then we can actually transform coordinates now the way how we did it before was let's just assume that at time t is equal to t is equal to zero lowercase t is time in this system uppercase t is the time in this system and we assume that the time is absolute and universal and is the same everywhere so if at moment time z, uh, at moment time zero, uh, the centers, the origins are coinciding and axes are coinciding as well. And then as the time grows, this system goes only along the x-axis, which means only x-axis is changing. Then the transformation would be That's supposed to be uppercase G. They are the same, but I still prefer to maintain different letters. So this is the coordinate, x coordinate at time t. This is of the in beta system. This is x coordinate in alpha system at times t. Minus uh, v times t, where v is um, speed this beta system is moving along a uh, alpha system along the x-axis while other coordinates are without change so this is just a reminder of what is Galilean transformation if the beta reference frame is moving uh, relative to alpha just along the x-axis from the beginning and at the beginning they completely coincide okay that's simple thing now my issue is that we have agreed and took it as an axiom that all the laws of physics are supposed to be the same in all inertial systems yeah. now why we took it as an axiom well it corresponds to our experience our common sense 
and physical experiments until until certain level where it started not actually to confirm and we will discuss this separately I mean that was the beginning of theory of relativity right now I'm just trying to approach this moment when everything was great so laws of physics are supposed to be the same these are transformations which are called Galilean transformations which physicists actually took as as a reasonable and they checked it looks like it was it was working at the time um, so let me just demonstrate basically what um, kind of different physical laws were checked against this particular transformation and uh, really prove that it does make sense to consider the laws of physics exactly the same in all inertial systems and taken into the law of transformation of coordinates this Galilean transformation so, the first thing which um, I would like to check is the first Newton's law. Okay, the first Newton's law should look the same in both inertial systems. So it looks in one way in one system, then it should look exactly the same in another system. So let's just check it out. Now, what is the first Newton's law? Let's say you have an object which moves without any kind of external force applied to it. So it moves freely. It moves along the straight line with a constant speed in alpha system. Okay. Now, if our presumptions about Galilean transformation are correct. If we will apply Galilean transformation to its coordinates, we should also have in another beta reference frame that its movement is a straight line with a constant speed. Okay, let's check it out. First of all, <coughs> what exactly is the movement uh, in case our um, object is moving in the alpha system, in the alpha reference frame, with constant speed along the straight line trajectory. Well, that's basically a three-dimensional um, straight line parameterized by the time. So what is it? Well, x of t is supposed to be equal to x0 plus uh, v x of t, not v of, multiplied. So, x0 is x coordinate at time 0, and then as the time grows, it linearly increasing with the time. So that's what makes a uh, straight line. Same thing with y. That would be a y component of its uh, velocity. Uh, and z would be z0 plus z component of its velocity. So I assume that velocity vector it has coordinates vx, vy, uh, should be capital Y. Capital Y and VZ. So if this is velocity, <coughs> constant velocity, we are talking about constant, the first law of Newton, no, no, no forces. So it's a constant velocity. So if this is a velocity vector, then this is basically the how the coordinates of this particular object are changing with the time. This is a description of the movement of the object in the alpha reference frame. Okay? Now, <coughs> um, let's just think about the beta reference frame. What happens in, in, in beta? Alright, let's just apply 
the uh, transformation. So we don't need this anymore. And let's apply Galilean transformation. Let's just assume for now uh, that the beta system is moving along the x-axis. So it's only the x coordinate is affected. So the x of t, as we know, should be equal to x of t uh, minus v times t. OK? Now, y should be equal to y, and z should be equal to z. OK, so in this case, it would be equal to x0 plus vx times t minus v times t equals to x0 plus vx minus minus lowercase v times t equals and I don't want to equals I can just replace capital T with a lowercase t because they are the same <coughs> now what is this well this is again a straight line now why y of t would be equal to the same thing and z of t should be equal to the same thing just change capital T to lowercase t because the time is absolute and the same now these three equations this, this and this define um, the straight line movement with the components of the vector of uh, velocity vx minus v comma vy uh, again capital and vz now these are all constants these are three components of the vector in the alpha reference frame it's a constant speed constant velocity speed along the trajectory and lowercase v is the um, speed of the beta system moving along the x-axis um, uh, relative to alpha system now if it by the way, I, I will address this a little bit later in this lecture, but it's obviously that if it's just any kind of movement along the straight line of beta re relative alpha, not necessarily along x-axis, there will just be different coefficients here. It will be vx, lowercase vx, v, vy, and vz. But later on I'll talk about this again. So the fact that I'm moving along the x-axis is not really um, any kind of a... Um, simplification it, it's just easier to talk about okay so that's the first law of Newton okay let's co talk about the second law <coughs> okay second law is related to force so there is some kind of a force it's one force or it's a sum of many different forces which are acting on the object and again let's right now consider a constant force constant force has in the alpha system certain coordinates fx f y and f z this is a vector of force let's call it f okay now, obviously, vector f. f is equal to m times a, where a is acceleration vector, f is a force vector, m is a mass of the object. So this is the second law 
of neutron. So let's see how it will be transformed from alpha system. So let's consider this is alpha system. Let's think about how it will be transformed into beta reference frame. Now, first of all, these coordinates of x, f, y, and f, f, z, these are coordinates of a constant vector in alpha system, basically projections of the vector to x, y, and z coordinate axes. Now, the beta reference frame is moving in such a way that its axes are always parallel to the alpha reference frame. Now, if axes are parallel, projections of this vector will be exactly the same. So I can say that the same fx, fy, and fz are coordinates of this vector in the beta system. So f is basically the same vector. Okay. So left part is not really changing whenever we are going from one system to another. How about right? Well, acceleration definitely is different. Something, something must be different because what is acceleration? Acceleration is the second derivative of coordinates. And since my um, beta reference frame is moving relative to alpha reference frame, coordinates are changing. And we, and we know basically how they are changing. They're changing according to Galilean transformation. Okay, that we know. Great. <coughs> now, obviously, since time is universal, I can put lowercase. So the same functions x, y, and z can be with lowercase t. And let's take the second derivative from these coordinates, from these functions, and see what happens. Now the first derivative is derivative of v times t would be v, right? v is a constant. Now the second derivative will be what? Second derivative would be second derivative of this. And second derivative of constant is zero, right? So what do we see? We see that acceleration in the beta system is exactly the same as acceleration in the alpha system. I can now return it back to capital T. So it will be definitely acceleration in the alpha system. Okay? So this remains the same. And that's the proof that the second uh, Newton's law looks exactly the same in both alpha and beta reference frames. Okay? All right. So what else can we do? Well, the third thing which I wanted to do today is talk about how um, speeds are basically changing. So we know that acceleration is not changing, and we know the position is changing according to the uh, uh, Galilean transformation. And uh, between acceleration and, and the position, there is a speed, because speed is the first derivative and acceleration is the second derivative. All right. So. What happens with the speed? So let's consider our object is moving with certain speed, with certain velocity vector, to tell, to, to, to tell you a little bit more precisely, and see what happens with the same object, what happens with its velocity vector in a beta system. So given velocity vector in the alpha, and uh, I actually have it as a V with alpha superscript. So it's variable. Let's just consider it's a different kind of a movement, more complicated. Maybe it's acceleration based on the force or whatever else. Some kind of a variable velocity vector 
which is basically the first derivative of coordinates, right? So, and uh, it's what? It's uh, V alpha x of t, V alpha y of t, uh, capital T, and V alpha z of capital T. That's my vector, velocity vector. Okay. Now, it's obviously equal to x first derivative of t, uh, y derivative of t by t, and z derivative. <coughs> now, derivative is derivative by time, obviously. Okay, this is my velocity vector. Okay, now how can it change in um, the beta system? And here I would like actually to a little bit more complicated, it's not really complicated, way of moving beta system relative to alpha system. Before I was talking about mov movement only along the x-axis and the constant v was my movement, right? But let's consider it a little bit more complicated. Let's say there is a vector v, and I will also call it alpha because it's all how beta is moving relative to alpha, which means in alpha coordinates, right? So let's consider there is a th there are three constants along the three different axes. So that would be uh, v alpha uh, x, v alpha y and V alpha Z. So these are uh, coordinates of the vector of movement of the entire beta system. And these are constants. Now before we had this and this zero, basically, right? But the movement is very, very similar and Galilean transformation uh, would be exactly uh, the same. Just slightly different, which means X of T would be equal to X of T um, minus v alpha x times t y of t, which is the same as before. Now it would be y t minus y component times t and z coordinate in the beta system would be z component in the alpha system minus v z times t. So that's basically exactly um, again a very simple um, continuation of moving only along the x-axis. This is moving along all three axes in some direction. But it's a constant, the vx, uh, vy and vz are constants. That's what makes it movement of the beta system along a straight line with a uh, constant speed relative to relative to x system okay <coughs> okay so that we have done now let's consider now vector of movement in the beta system of t now this is basically very similar to this. It has beta x component, beta y component, and beta z component, which are derivatives of corresponding coordinates, right? So this is x uh, derivative by time, y derivative by time and z derivative by time that's what it is similar to this one now knowing the transformation let's just check it out so if i will take derivative of this again lowercase and capital case t are exactly the same so i can put lowercase t and differentiate so it will be x of t minus the x alpha 
y derivative of t minus v alpha y comma and v uh, z third derivative is z of t minus v alpha z which well, let me convert it into vector form its vector x t y t y of t and z of t which is this one right so it's alpha minus and these are three components of my vector of movement of the entire beta system so this is compare this to this this is the law of addition of velocities if you have some kind of a movement of an object in the alpha system and V represents uh, basically V can be variable if V of T not necessarily along the straight line so any kind of a movement um, in the alpha system which is described by this by this vector of velocity and this is description of the same object's movement but in the beta reference frame and we know that the beta frame is moving along alpha frame with constant uh, velocity vector v alpha whatever the components are this is a constant vector which is given because beta system is given as moving relative to alpha system then this is basically the law of addition of velocities so you just have to subtract the vector of uh, velocity we subtract from it the vector of movement of an entire system and this is basically the law of addition of velocities let me just write it down again so the beta vector of velocity is equal to alpha vector of velocity minus vector of vector which describes the velocity of an entire beta system in alpha coordinates okay so that's basically it I would like you to um, uh, look into description of this lecture there are notes so everything is presented on unisor.com in uh, you have to go to relativity part of this website relativity course and uh, if you will open the relativity course you will have it in the first um, part which basically describes the principles of relativity so this is Galilean invariance and addition of velocities so thank you very much and good luck <laughs>